welcome to Pakistani Profile. My guest for today is not only a trained youth uh, trainer, but also an entrepreneur and an active social worker. He enjoys his work and loves to interact with people, and maybe that is one reason why he's um, managed to capture such a large number of fans because of the positive response and the positive message that he passes on to others. Let's welcome Amir Jaliawala. Hi, Amir. Hi. Thank you for having me over. Thank you so much for being part of our show. So, Amir, we're going to link this to your personal life first. Okay. Tell me more about your childhood and your education. Um, I, I was based in Hyderabad. Hyderabad right. is a small place next to Karachi. And that's where my most of the schooling happened. And I shared this during my trainings that my childhood was, I'd get up at 7 in the morning, get to my school at 8 o'clock, uh, be in the school till about 2 o'clock, come back, uh, get tuitions from 3 to 8. And at times when I would just come back, my brother and I from the tuition and we'd have, we'd see the sun, we'd be so surprised to see the sun up because all that we did was schooling and tuition, schooling and tuition. Right. And that's because uh, my dad had worked really hard to, to be where he is today, mm. from being a shorthand typist to becoming the senior HR manager. Mm. And when you yourself have such a background, you would not like your children to go through such struggle. Right. So his emphasis was that you should have a strong foundation, strong base. And, and I remember that I could not watch onto the shows that kids would normally do. I couldn't play any games. And perhaps that's also one of the reasons why I started doing the work that I do. Right. So that was schooling. I was always a high achiever. Um, so you were a good student. Yeah, I was. I was. No doubt about that. I've always been. And, uh, uh, and somehow that also helped in future, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but uh, extracurricular was also one strong area. Right. And uh, also what we were just talking about, I think, getting students together on certain on a certain task. For example, I was never selected to be part of the cricket team, so I got my own team together. Mm. And I went to the principal and said that you should not play with people who are the best. You should with, play with people who are passionate. Mm. And I said, oh, all right, you make your own team. And, and such kind of stunts that we always put up against mm. teachers, against the system. Mm. So that's what schooling has been about. Okay. So what was your goal back then well, as a mm. student? And how has that changed? Has that changed over time? Mm. And what the goal was back then, has that been achieved till now? Uh, it's interesting, and I shared this in my career programs, that back in class two, uh, when you used to write myself paragraphs, I would always end the paragraph by saying, my aim in life is to become a cricket commentator. Okay. And I was so inspired by uh, Ravi Shastri and Tony Greek and Jeff Boycott, who mm. could turn these matches around, make them so much more exciting. Mm. So that's what my mission always was. And my teacher would cut it out and say, engineer, say doctor instead, which were regular career patterns that we are fed into. Uh, when I reached my uh, intermediate level, um, and that's when I moved to Karachi, and I would have my bike and I would go to my college and then university. When I would be riding my bike, I would always be thinking that I'm a minister or I'm a politician and I'm addressing the nation. Mm. And I'd go on and on doing these different talks as to why did we take this step? Why didn't we do this? Talking to the nation. Uh, but later on, I became a trainer. Right. And somehow, and, and that's another interesting point to catch on to, there's some similarity between these three. Right which is the mic factor, which is talking, talking. which is the popularity. Mm. And somehow or the other, uh, that's the belief that I have that uh, uh, you have to see the target you want to get to. Mm. And by seeing, I mean that if you want to ever become a commentator or ever become a, an actor, you have to see an audience in front of you. Mm. You have to feel what they would be feeling. You have to see what they'll be seeing. You have to hear what they'll be hearing. And that somehow connects later on. Like Steve Jobs also said, things yeah. do connect on. Yeah. So, uh, Umair, why did you choose to become a trainer? Uh, when I was doing my BBA, mm. uh, Bachelor's in Business Administration, mm. I specialized in marketing. Mm. Uh, at that point in time, I was pretty convinced to get into the corporate sector mm. because it somehow felt like that's the only respectable profession around and because dad had done it and my brother was doing it. I guess it. that's the image that we've given from we childhood. We usually do, right. yeah. So, um, and I got into, I got into an internship program of a very good company mm. and somehow or the other I ended up becoming the best intern there. So I was offered their management training program, which mm. is usually after your graduation. Yeah. And uh, so here I had this option and on the other end I was working with School of Leadership mm. doing youth training programs mm. and I used to do 90 minute career planning sessions back then. Mm. And one of the telecoms was sponsoring me across 18 universities in Pakistan. Mm. And those 90 minutes, you wouldn't believe, we used to talk to people and they would come back crying and they'd say, why didn't you tell this earlier? We've invested all that we had. We've done four years of the studies. We really don't want to do this. And we saw engineers who could perhaps be guitarists. We saw um, doctors who could perhaps be painters. We saw uh, business students who were perhaps so much better at media or so many other things. Right. So at that point in time, I had this choice whether I should go for the management training program 
or keep doing this work which was very fascinating which had a celebrity feel to it and a lot of and scope it had a lot of scope but very little of financial scope right because uh, and to date i don't know what i'll be doing oh, alhamdulillah now i can tell that what i'm doing for the next two months but what if there's some emergency that strikes us mm. because training is the first expense that the companies will go down on yeah and it's uh, even calling it an expense reflects the mindset itself mm. so here i was so i picked training as a profession and uh, i started doing this eight months i'd be going around and people would say you've gone crazy nobody's going to pay you you're 22 right now who would like to listen to you who would like to learn from yeah, you yeah because the general perception is that a trainer needs to have that much of experience yeah. to be able to train others yeah and somehow the paradigm about gray hair yeah. or about having a belly yeah. and uh, some uh, big degree that you yeah. would have uh, so we were chal- we were c- combating all of that uh, but i am glad i made this choice it's um, it's so relaxing uh, to date the way i'm dressed right now that's the way i go to work and uh, what i do every bit of it even if it's small thing back in the office it's so much more meaningful everything has a meaning right so it yeah. does attract you it does it, it does right. and uh, like i say my mission is to turn people on it uh, and uh, i think uh, to in order to be able to do that uh, mission accomplish that mission i have to be turned on myself and mm. uh, it's my work that does it mm. amir you're also involved in social work mm. more like what are you associated with what is being done right now yeah Uh, I've been very lucky to um, to have seen generation of you because I've been doing this for about five years now, mm. and people who I trained five years ago, four years ago, are now running their own organizations, or are are now ending up in different places. Mm. Uh, somehow or the other, I have never started something in terms of social context. The only thing that I did last year was at Razakabad camp, wherein there were uh, IDPs from all across in the flood affectees, mm. and we went there and did engagement exercises with them. That's the only initiative that I have taken. Other than that, what I usually do is just join in the causes. Okay. I think there's so much work that's going on, and just picking up a cause and putting it on my profile can, if that can make a difference, then why not? Mm. So um, my social angle is attached to my supporting the causes that are already there. Right. Who has been your inspiration? Uh, that that reminds me of uh, one of my mentors, Kamran uh, Kamran Rizvi. He mm. says. Um, He says that just like with just like how you can adopt anyone around, you can adopt children. Why can't you adopt all these gurus? Why can't you adopt Bill Gates? Why can't you adopt Steve Jobs right. as your grandfather? You know, and when, only when you do it, you realize you're from his family, and perhaps you're supposed to think like that. So my inspiration has uh, has been the amazing authors that I've read, from Mumtaz Muftis of the world to uh, to Jim Collins about business or Stephen Covey about life. Uh, from these authors to some local people like Shireen, like Kamran, mm. who have been doing this work in Pakistan, and uh, now I've explored entire fraternity of people, and I think now I've arrived at a level where inspiration is not bound to a personality. Two inspiration things. could be that simple flower that is in front of you, True. or could be these lights, lights which are just uh, staying focused on us. It could be simple things that you can get inspired yeah, from. Yeah, so it doesn't necessarily have to be people. Yeah, it can be anything around you. Yes, and it's only uh, like. Uh, I share this in my training, like Khalil Gibran said, if uh, if God gave you the eyes, if if you had, if you were in your senses, uh, you would perhaps learn silence from the talkative. You would learn how to be respectful from the disrespectful. So everything then becomes a message for you. Mm. So inspiration for me now, it could be those um, the cab drivers that I ride on to every now and then, listening to their stories and where they have come from. That could be perhaps more inspiring than what I read in in some great bestseller. Mm. Right. Where um, you are very, very famous among the young mm. generation. What is that one factor that you consider attracts youth towards you? I have uh, I have received this feedback that you do on stage what we do in our groups. Hmm. You see, there's uh, when you get onto the stage, you realize oh, there are certain constraints that you need to stay in. The language has to yeah. be sophisticated, yeah. and what you're saying has uh, has to be in certain boundaries. and i think when i started out and i was i was very bold in that way that i would go around and say all that i had to so i could give these examples of picking up a career of personal choice of passionate choices is just like making love and having sex and the act is the same but the spirit can make so much of a difference mm. and giving these examples in auditorium schools that we went to colleges that we went to and teachers would be stunned what is he talking about but that's how i connected with youngsters because that's the kind of language that they understood mm. so i think and, and my inspiration came from sufis here because sufis came over from different places no sufi died in the bo- in the land that he or she was born in right uh, and they traveled all across and wherever they uh, they set up wherever they settled in 
they became like the people there mm. so they were involved in the festivals they would wear their colors they would speak their language and it's that character that inspired people so because i was a youth trainer previously now i do a lot of work in the corporate sector so i spoke their language uh, i think the the best part was that i could say whatever i wanted to say in the way i'd like to say so you basically made them feel one of you yeah yeah right um amir in the end your message for the nation of pakistan yeah that's the tricky bit especially <laughs> after this long conversation that we had before the show but um uh, i think this comes from elizabeth gilford i i recently finished this book eat pray love and uh, there's also a very interesting ted talk that i recommend the viewers to see which is about creativity mm and uh, wherein she talks about uh, that when you've already written a best seller how difficult is it to write another one and because she already had a crazy best seller it was so difficult for her to get back into the writing mode because the expectations are so high right but then in the talk she talks about how creativity was previously not attributed to the individual himself or herself it was rather a divine intervention mm. um and she attributes creativity to that and that can just put you out of the throne and you wouldn't feel so tense but she said this beautiful thing and she said that sometimes your creative genius will do wonders and sometimes it will just do a ridiculous job but uh, what we've got to do is to do our best with whatever we have mm. and whatever time that we have and not fear of failure yeah so in whatever capacity we are whether it's the school that we're talking about or that little organization or that little community that you're part of mm. do the best that you can with it and that will be enough right thank you so much yeah. amir Thank uh, you so much. Wish you much. all the best for the future. Thanks a lot. For more Pakistani profiles, visit our website pakistaniprofiles.com.